Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, let's look at what's the difference between Wi-Fi 7 wi connection versus uh, a prior generation Wi-Fi client association. When IEEE developed uh, 802.11be, they had few uh, objectives in mind. So one being how to provide extremely high throughput. And not only extremely high throughput, they, they wanted to achieve higher reliability. Uh, at the same time, to give the good experience, uh, so they wanted to have a low latency. So keep, you know, like uh, augmented reality, um, video gaming in mind. Uh, so they wanted to have this kind of uh, uh, amendment to provide better use experience. So when Wi-Fi Alliance uh, developed Wi-Fi 7 certification, uh, 11BE was the sort of uh, amendment they based on. So in that way, just remember, uh, Wi-Fi 7 is based on uh, EHT or 11BE amendment. Uh, so now if you look at the uh, pre-generation uh, Wi-Fi client association, uh, it's really like a AP can be Wi-Fi 7 AP operating on multiple band, but if your client device is not Wi-Fi 7, so then uh, they can establish connection across one of the band. You know, like it can be either 2.4 or it, it can be 5 gigahertz or it can be 6 gigahertz. So client will determine based on the RF condition, so which radio band they first associate to, uh, but they cannot really uh, choose multiple band. That's the main difference. Uh, so in this example, client basically went ahead and establish a Wi-Fi connection across a 6 gigahertz band. So now if a client basically moving away from the AP and if they think 6 gigahertz signal is now too weak, so they have to basically uh, roam into another band. Uh, Sometimes it can be within the same AP, but this process is involving a reassociation. So that will be taking some time. So that way changing the band uh, will creating as a client roaming event. So now if you look at, you know, in that particular scenario, station will use whatever the uh, MAC address of the particular radio band uh, for client MAC address. And then basically AP also have a uh, specific SSI, BSSID, uh, which is a MAC address associated with each radio band. So now if you uh, check, uh, you know, like the, this is my Windows client, you know, like uh, uh, when client associate, you can use NetSH WLAN show interface command. So you can see client associated in 6 gigahertz band, um, channel number 21, you can see, uh, and they use those client MAC address, which is the uh, physical MAC addresses of the 6 gigahertz kind of radio. Now, in Wi-Fi 7, uh, they introduce the concept of multi-link operation or what we call MLO. In that way, that's a key difference. You know, sometimes when you troubleshooting Wi-Fi 7 connection, it's important to understand uh, this concept of uh, multi-link operation. So let's look at how it uh, works in a Wi-Fi 7 kind of scenario. So in this particular case, same Wi-Fi 7 capable AP, but the difference is now client is Wi-Fi 7 capable. So I use Intel BE200, so which is a, Wi-Fi 7 capable adapter. So now in this particular scenario, still client also have a three band support 2.4, 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz. So now in this particular scenario, so Wi-Fi 7 allow something called MLO, multi-link operation. So client can basically establish the connection using multiple physical link. So in this particular example, you know, like now sometime it can be either 2.4, 5 gigahertz, or it can be 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz because at the client level, it's very difficult to uh, implement all the tri-band kind of support. In that way, uh, client will more likely not establish connection across all three band, but sometime in case like uh, access point operating as a client, so sometime you may be able to uh, do that kind of association. Now in this particular example, you know, like uh, I use Cisco Meraki uh, access point uh, so in that particular case, my client basically uh, associated to 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. So now 
in this kind of scenario, what are the MAC addresses being used? You know, because if you're establishing a uh, link across multiple uh, physical links, uh, still you have to send the association request from an individual band, either 2.45 gigahertz. In that way, certain frames will be using the link level MAC addresses. But sometime now we talked about the roaming in the previous scenario. Uh, so it will uh, treating as a clan roam. Uh, you have to basically renegotiate the key, encryption keys, uh, when you're moving from one band to another band because it triggers as a reassociation. But in this particular case, uh, because you establish a connection across these two bands, uh, you would be able to uh, smoothly uh, sweep between uh, uh, 2.45 gigahertz. Now, to facilitate that, you need to make sure you have a, some uh, common encryption key uh, between these particular physical links. That means you have to have a uh, common unicast encryption key. To facilitate this kind of thing, uh, IEEE, you know, like when they released this uh, amendment, they came up with the idea of upper MAC and lower MAC. In that way, in this scenario, even the physical level, link level, you will have a, uh, individual MAC addresses uh, at the AP and the client level as well. But the difference is now we have a, some concept called uh, upper layer MAC or sometimes we call multi-link device MAC address, MLD MAC address. So sometimes it can use a physical address as well. That's up to the vendor implementation, but it can be a, a different MAC address as well. So this MAC address will be using for certain functions like security association, encrypt, unicast encryption key derivation, those kind of purposes. Now client station point of view as well, you have these uh, physical link level MAC addresses as well as uh, UMAC or what we call upper MAC. So now when you look at, you know, like in this particular case, if you, if I show you the my output from the NetSHW LAN show interface, you can see client established the connection uh, using 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Uh, so you can clearly see uh, those uh, MAC addresses detail and AP's uh, MLD MAC address will be showing here. So now if you go to the Meraki side as well, you can get basic those detail, you know, like client connection overview, you can see link zero and link one are showing as the client connection, uh, indicating say MLO connection. Uh, if you check the MAC address of the client, it's showing the uh, MLD MAC address. But now, uh, if you look at the Wireshark kind of uh, packet uh, frame capture, you will see client will basically not using MLD MAC address to send uh, authentication frame, uh, reassociation frame, those kind of detail go individual uh, MAC link level MAC address. In that way, if you want to filter the client uh, traffic, you have to go with the individual link addresses. So sometimes this is the uh, thing to keep in mind. Otherwise, if you use the MLD MAC address uh, for the Wireshark capture, you may not able to see a lot of traffic. Why? Because we use the link specific address for link specific kind of communication. So sometime if you want to understand, uh, they will basically switching between the band and those kind of thing. You have to capture, uh, across all the, these three different frequencies. Otherwise you will miss certain control traffic, uh, because we are now going between the band in that way, multi-channel packet captures, uh, useful. So now, uh, Cisco Merak is the one of the easiest way, you know, like you can take the packet capture at the AP level and then you will get the, uh, decrypted view as well. So in that way, quite easy to analyze this kind of communication. Otherwise, you know, like even you use multi-channel packet capture using over the air, uh, these lot of these frames are, uh, protected, uh, even the management frames. So in that way, you will not able to see the inner detail. So if you want to really un understand the uh, communication, uh, I would suggest basically, you know, if you have a Meraki environment, it's very easy to uh, take packet capture. I'll talk about that uh, packet capture process separately, but I just want to make sure you understand clearly uh, 
what kind of differences you know like a wi-fi 7 connection versus wi-fi 6 or wi-fi 5 connections make so now i have you know like a given another slide talking about uh, same thing using a 9800 manage access point uh, in this particular scenario same intel be uh, 200 adapter uh, so this particular time uh, i saw basically you know client connecting across the uh, 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz so it is you know like a uh, more likely the client will be choosing two different band um, rather than all three band because client level is very difficult to uh, implement RF filtering uh, across all this particular band and more likely you will see uh, out of three possible links most likely you will establish a uh, link across two different physical links. Now in this particular scenario as well you will see the AP side uh, lower Mac or uh, and then upper Mac which is the MLD Mac address uh, and client level as well you will have a uh, individual addresses as well as the upper Mac address now when you go to the 9800 side uh, you will see this uh, MLD Mac address appear as the client Mac address uh, but if you want to go to the frame level detail uh, you have to go with this individual link MAC addresses to filter your traffic. So in this particular example, you can see client establish link using channel 21 and 140, uh, which is 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz link. Uh, and then, you know, like uh, the this, this concept of link ID is also part of this Wi-Fi 7. So we typically, you know, like a 2.4 can be link ID 0. And in this particular access point 9178, um, it has a dual 5 gig in that way link ID I think 1 and 2 maybe Cisco using for the 5 gigahertz radio and link ID 3 I saw using as a, a 6 gigahertz radio uh, so in that way pay attention sometimes it may be different depending on the vendor implementation uh, but in the 9800 side as well you can see client MAC address is appear as the MLD MAC address so that's it for this particular high level video so we will basically, uh, I will go more deep into, you know, like a four-way handshake in the Wi-Fi 7, different kind of other concept in, uh, uh, and then I'll talk about it in upcoming video. Uh, but I just want to make sure uh, you understand the difference between uh, Wi-Fi 7 MLO connection uh, versus uh, pre-generation, pre-Wi-Fi 7 generation client connectivity. It's very important uh, concept to understand when it come to uh, troubleshooting. Okay, so until I meet you again, uh, take care.